Welcome to MindBridge AI. 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 Welcome to MindBridge Edge 2023, The Human Edge, where the convergence of cutting edge technology and the limitless potential of humanity takes center stage. In a world constantly evolving, where digital innovation is reshaping the way we work and live, our remission remains clear to harness the transformative power of AI, not as a replacement for human capability, but as a catalyst to achieve what was before impossible. I am Danielle Sepkis cheek the VP of Strategy and Industry Relations here at MindBridge, and this year's conference host. We sincerely appreciate the privilege of your time to join us today and tomorrow. We hope you'll find the time to be well invested. We have an amazing lineup of outstanding speakers for the next two days. Capital markets are demanding a new level of transparency, and the traditional paradigms of financial decision-making are undergoing a profound transformation. However, this digital revolution has also unleashed an avalanche of data often characterizes big data. This presents both an incredible opportunity and a formidable challenge. In the, this landscape, the context of what is truly knowable is no longer as straightforward as it once was. The sheer volume and complexity of data defy conventional approaches to analysis and understanding. Yet within this vast sea of information lies the potential for unparalleled insights and competitive advantages. In this era of data-driven decision-making, Organizations face the imperative to harness advanced analytics, artificial intelligence, and machine learning to distill meaning from the data deluge. It's no longer merely about collecting data. It's about extracting actionable intelligence, identifying trends, mitigating risk, making informed real-time decisions. Thus, the digitization of the finance function and the surge in data volumes have presented us with a double-edged sword. On one hand, they offer the promise of greater transparency and efficiency paving the way for innovation and enhanced market integrity. However, on the other, they compel us to confront the inherent challenges of data overload and the evolving nature of what constitutes knowledge. In navigating this transformation landscape, organizations must leverage cutting edge technologies and data analytics tools, not only to keep pace with the evolving concepts of what is noble, but to redefine it. MindBridge is the world's leading provider of anomaly detection in audit and finance. We exist for you to better understand your business critical data with unprecedented clarity. This year, I had to calculate something into the quadrillions. I actually made two people on this call double check my math. As an accountant, I only feel comfortable in the millions and billions. I struggle to conceptualize trillions and to get into quadrillions, I don't even trust my own computational capabilities. Today, you need a scalable solution. MindBridge's product line is highly scalable and unmatched in our industry. Our general ledger module can analyze an astonishing 500 million records. When you run 32 tests or control points, we call them, we create 16 billion data points that we have to analyze to give your scores of high, medium, low on your transactions. In order to create the results of just one of those tests, our machine learning rare flows test, we have to assess 250 quadrillion relationships just to complete that one calculation. This is precisely what I mean by empowering individuals to an unprecedented level. The logic of rare flows is not hard, just which debit credit pairing is not like the rest. But if you were ask a human to provide this calculation manually, it would take longer than their entire career lifespan to provide you with the result. This is what we are offering you at the onset of your processes or workflows. It's the reason you have an easy to use out of the box solution to achieve your results that were previously beyond reach. Today, we all function in a rigorously regulated environment. And with the code of, many, of ethics for many of us lies the principle of maintaining professional skepticism. We built a solution for financial professionals and it's incumbent on us to show you that you can rely on us in a way that your skills, knowledge and expertise are well suited. To that end, we go through a series of external party assurance engagements. Table stakes is confidentiality of the data. We have three ISOs and a SOC two and three to provide you assurance there. However, we did not believe that ISOs and SOCs were enough. 
Hence, several years ago, we took a pioneering step by becoming the first in our industry to undergo a comprehensive algorithm assessment. To this day, we continue to subject our technology to independent assessments, ensuring transparency for our customers and affirming that our algorithms operate as designed and are designed well. We believe we stand as a trailblazer in this industry in adopting this practice. It's worth noting that we have successfully completed two years of these um, assessments and are about to commence our third. This is a milestone that holds particular significance considering it predates the formation of many AI vendors in existence today. I encourage you to catch the session later today from the co-CEO of Holistic AI. Industry recognition for MindBridge is also growing. We've been proud to be acknowledged as a cool vendor with Gartner. This is quite the honor as it is that rare. The Gartner Cool Vendor for Finance Report is designed to highlight interesting, new, and innovative vendors, products, and services. We believe this is a powerful step forward in our work to bring AI-driven anomaly detection to businesses that want greater insight and control over their financial risk and data. MindBridge was also featured as vendors in four different hype cycles. As you may know, the Gartner Hype Cycle reports help companies identify tools, products that are potentially relevant to solving their real problems in their business, as well as exploiting new opportunities. Hype cycles are developed by expert analysis according to their common methodology. MindBridge was acknowledged in the Emerging Technologies and Finance, Autonomous Accounting, Data Analytics and Governance, and Procurement and Sourcing Solutions 2023 Hype Cycles. I'm also excited to announce the launch of an official MindBridge Academy Learning Badge program. This contributes to a culture of continuous learning and the effective utilization of MindBridge, which benefits both individual users as well as your respective organizations. As of today, you can attain the Verified User Learning Badge. The badge is designed to provide learners with a foundational understanding of how to effectively use MindBridge anomaly detection. This badge serves as an entry point for individuals who are new to anomaly detection and or the specific MindBridge tool. <clears throat> Secondly, we are excited to offer the Anomaly Detection Pro Learning Badge, designed for individuals who are ready to dive deeper into the nuances of value and uses of anomaly detection. This badge is tailored to the understanding of how to use MindBridge results for meaningful insights and decision-making. Over the next two days, we will have an exceptional lineup of industry experts, topics that will empower you to adopt and scale AI with confidence. This includes several keynotes that you do not want to miss. As many of you have noticed, we have recently unveiled an exciting partnership with KPMG Global. Later today, Sebastian Stockel, the global head of audit innovation, will delve into his visionary outlook for the future of audit. Judging by the overwhelming pre-registration number for his session, it is evident this is the most eagerly awaited session of our conference. Ryan Mitchell from Chevron will share valuable insights into the projects they've undertaken and their future direction in the realm of anomaly detection at Chevron. The last time I had the pleasure of hearing Ryan speak, he expressed such enthusiasm for a particular feature, one that I personally had a hand in and he didn't actually know about, that it reinforced the excitement that we feel at MindBridge for helping people work more efficiently and effectively. Tomorrow, we are honored to host Henri Goldfarb, undeniably one of the world's leading authorities on AI economics. He will delve into the thought-provoking concepts of his latest book, Power and Prediction. His initial work, Prediction Machines, has become essential reading within our field. To discover how to learn more to earn more and even secure a signed copy of his latest book, please refer to your conference details email or visit the conference uh, website homepage. While I won't be able to spotlight all of the current sessions individually, we understand that it might be challenging to ascend all of our sessions live. If you happen to miss this session or wish to revisit one, simply refer to the conference site information that was sent to you via email and you'll find the posting of the recordings right there. For any colleagues that may have forgotten to register and are having a little bit of FOMO or fear of missing out on this valuable content, there is still an opportunity to register until the conclusion of our last session. And clearly by doing so, they can secure early access to the session recordings. I am so glad you're here and I'm confident we will make good use of your time you're investing with us over the next two days. And therefore I'd like to introduce two amazing colleagues of mine at MindBridge and it is rare to have such colleagues of this caliber. Robin Grosset is the Chief Technology Officer at MindBridge. He is part of the genius behind MindBridge's scalability, and I've been known to hang on his every word. He was an IBM Distinguished Engineer and the former Chief Architect at IBM Watson Analytics. Robin has more accolades and patents than we even have time to discuss, but his true brilliance comes out in being able to explain insanely complicated concepts 
in a way that we can understand them. Rachel Kirkham is the VP of AI and product at MindBridge. She is responsible for the delivery of AI into the product, our overall product strategy, and develop of our new analysis. Prior to joining MindBridge, Rachel was the head of data analytics research at the UK National Audit Office, leading a team of data scientists, analysts, and developing a unique data analytics capability for financial audit. She is absolutely and literally the coolest accountant I've ever met and is also an ACA qualified chartered accountant. Without further ado, Robin and Rachel. Thanks very much, Danielle, for that uh, very, very kind introduction. Um, so uh, without further ado, um, uh, we'll, we'll get started. So uh, the session today, uh, we're going to go through, uh, there's going to be a couple of different kind of stages to the session. Um, we're going to talk about the future, where we're going, what our plans are. And uh, but in order to understand those, uh, we wanted to give you a little bit of an overview of our journey today to, you know, in part to know where you're going. It's good to know where you are, but also how far you've come. So, uh, you know, I get the, the, the distinct pleasure of, of, of talking about the achievements of the MindBridge team to date, right? So we have an amazing uh, team here at MindBridge who are day in, day out building uh, our, our technology, our product. And, the, you know, in talking about what we have done today, it, it really is a credit to that group, right? So I get the pleasure, the distinct uh, honor of talking about it. But I really wanted to give the full credit for what we've achieved to this point to the whole MindBridge team. We're all a part of making this work. So let's get started on a little bit about why MindBridge, right? And this actually goes back all the way to the very early days of the MindBridge technology. When we were thinking about, you know, what, what does what does the financial markets need? What does audit need in order uh, to uh, perform their function better? How can we empower and enable human financial professionals to be better? And we looked at existing approaches. We looked at um, what was coming down the pipe, what's going to be possible with technologies like um, machine learning and artificial intelligence. And uh, we, we picked a path which was uh, really, we think, we think enabling people uh, with um, AI powered analytics to understand financial data was, it was a missing part, right? Um, and I wanna talk a little bit about how um, we, we conceive this as a difference between top down and kind of bottom up analysis. So what do I mean by that? So top-down analysis, um, you know, think about it like you're starting at, uh, you have a big pile of data, you've basically, you've typically aggregated it into some structure that allows you to deal with it. And you are going to look at it using some sort of descriptive analytics. So you're slicing and dicing the data, uh, you're looking at it in different perspectives and you're drilling down and finding things. Now that's, that's a, um, it, it's often a, a human driven activity, predominantly a human driven activity. And technologies like computer aided audit tools uh, are designed to do this. Um, business intelligence products also designed to do this, designed to support this. And you can even think of databases and SQL queries as enabling uh, this ability to slice and dice, get perspectives on what's going on in the data. Now, the challenge with this approach is that in any sufficiently complex set of data, there are going to be hundreds, thousands, millions of different potential hypotheses that a user could have and that they could follow through the data. So they might have to um, sometimes refer to this as hunting and pecking through the data, right? Um, it, it, it's an approach that, it, it, you know, you're unlikely with this approach of have a hypothesis, pursue it through the data to find something that you don't expect in part because you have to have the idea to pose the question, right? Um, and, and this is one of the limiting factors is, um, you know, whilst you might find things unexpected, it's, it's often by chance. Uh, and you're certainly not looking at all the data and figuring out what's actually going on under the covers. Um, to do that, you'd have to pose every possible hypothesis question that you could think of. And that's obviously, you know, not in the realms of possibility. And this is where this bottom up view uh, uh, comes in. And, it, you know, it's a part of the kind of foundation of, of how MindBridge, up, uh, MindBridge works. Uh, in the bottom up view, we start at the most detailed level of data. We apply machine learning algorithms, looking at every detail of every row of every transaction. And every possible data point is considered and assessed by those machine learning views. Um, and, and it also uses multiple control points. So multiple different algorithms are used 
uh, in order to get this kind of 360 degree view of what's actually going on. We call these uh, um, different views control points at MindBridge. Um, so in this way, the machine learning lets the data speak for itself. It allows, their, allows users to find genuine unknowns, things they don't expect, because the machine has looked at every possible combination. It's figured out there's something unusual going on in this corner over here, maybe a very detailed difference. And it's surfacing and bubbling that information up to the user. And this is what we mean by bottom up. So it finds the detailed problems and then it aggregates and surfaces the unusual activity so that a user can uh, and navigate and find those things. So um, this system, you know, because it relies on unsupervised machine learning, it, it can also adapt and calibrate itself to the practices and processes it uncovers from a given subject organization. This means that the um, this means that MindBridge can work on uh, many different organizations in different industries and different data sets uh, uh, because what it actually is doing in the machine learning is finding patterns of normal and then looking for patterns that don't look normal. The result is a much more focused approach that leverages the computational power of AI to run all the potential hypotheses and find is issues. And the analysis that a user can do is very focused on those things that represent the most irregular risks in a data set. And this is how MindBridge has started out. This was our thought process when we started. And I wanted to share some of the progress that we've made in the last, uh, I want to say, seven years uh, in, in building our platform. But this, th this approach change is something which um, we're going to talk about a few times in the, in the session today, how the difference between following a biased hypothesis of a user versus letting the data speak for itself. And it really is a part of the value that MindBridge has been able to deliver. So, you know, how did we start? Where are we on our journey with these control point things that I was mentioning? So we've evolved that, you know, the version 1.0 of MindBridge only had seven control points. Um, I was looking at a picture of our user interface uh, as I prepared for this session, um, and you can see actually that the expert score control point comes from a very, that, that tile comes from a very early version of MindBridge. Um, so over the years, we have continued to add uh, control point capabilities. So this means algorithms, whether they're machine learning, statistical or rules based, we've been adding them to our ensemble of tests that we're running. And we've, we've increased the coverage that we have of different scenarios. Uh, we've increased the coverage of different possible algorithm types that we can employ. And um, you know, as you can see, that number of control points available is, is, is creeping up. Um, I checked our knowledge base in, uh, again, preparing for this session. How many documented control points are there in our knowledge base today? If you're a MindBridge user, you can log in. You can actually go and find out about these. We're extremely transparent on how they work. Uh, and we explain it in plain language as well, which I think is a super important thing. Um, you won't find uh, things like uh, sigmas or Greek symbols in our explanations because we want, we genuinely want financial professionals who aren't AI experts to understand how the system works. Um, so I, I, I checked our list of control points and there are 87 there, um, but that actually belies the, the capability in the platform. There are actually many more. Um, 87 plus N is how I'm describing that right now. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit uh, about Flex in a moment. Uh, Flex uh, continues to add an increasing number of algorithms to our platform uh, day after day. So we're, we're well above 87. We're just 87 of the ones that are currently documented in, in, in the knowledge base. Uh, but we'll talk about flex in a bit. Now, it's not just the number of control points that has been improving over the years. It's also uh, how each one of those control points is working. And we've been steadily improving them uh, uh, release after release. So uh, and I use the expert score uh, um, control point as an example. When we first created that, it knew uh, 60 different rules about um, account interactions, whether they were generally acceptable accounting practices, whether they were high risk or low risk. Um, uh, uh, the expert score was relatively primitive in those early stages. Um, and over time, we've evolved that. Actually, with the help of both Rachel and Danielle on this call, uh, um, we have evolved the expert score control point who are, you know, as, as Daniel pointed out, um, financial professionals, uh, um, very experts in this area. Um, um, we've expanded that. So we have over a thousand, um, um, uh, a, a thousand flows can be understood and scored by the expert score system today. And what's really cool about this is we're taking the, 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 uh, the knowledge of expert um, auditors and financial professionals, we're encoding that knowledge, and then we're able to run that knowledge on every transaction. It's a super powerful concept, right? 
Um, so we didn't stop there, though. Um, um, we've also added in recent times um, expert explanations. So it will actually tell you which parts of a transaction it is, it is, uh, it is scoring in which way. In the user interface today, you can actually find out why did the expert score score a particular contraction, a particular transaction in a particular way. It will tell you about it, uh, and it will explain which one and, and what score it received. But we've also taken another step, and this is something that was this year, uh, and you might have missed this. This was, a, this was in our release in the middle of the year. We've made expert score configurable, and it can now understand more flows. There's a, a user a, a configuration interface. Uh, in our product. That's a screenshot, by the way, from our knowledge base there uh, at, at the, the top right of the screen. Uh, and you can go in and you can adapt it. You can actually uh, adapt the uh, expert score for new areas for uh, different um, uh, financial practices. It could be related to your methodology or how you think about financial data or a particular, <coughs> particular domain. Um, so and again, that configuration and configurable in libraries is something that has been a major theme in the MindBridge platform over the years. And we we refer to this as, you know, one size fits one. Um, um, you, can you can make MindBridge your own. You can decide how you want to adopt it and you, you can customize it to be how your firm wants to work or how your firm thinks about finances. So again, a journey, uh, you can see that we've come a long way and you know, from starting from simple, you know, keeping it simple at the beginning. And then over time, we have added more uh, capability and complexity to our platform today it is now extremely accomplished. Um, so I wanted to talk just briefly about flows because um, we've also made some updates to flows. Flows are a fundamental building block of how um, our analysis works. And uh, flows are actually not something that MindBridge invented. This is something that was invented as a part of double entry bookkeeping. Um, so uh, when you have a, 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 a double entry transaction, um, an account is credited and an account is debited. And that represents a flow of monetary value between accounts. Um, so, and again, this is something that MindBridge has done for a long time. We are basically unpacking the flows in a transaction, figuring out which accounts are interacting in order to analyze what's actually going on. What are the processes underlying uh, uh, the activities in the transactions? Now, um, it sounds very simple. You see there's a screenshot there, uh, again, top, uh, top right, of this comes from our knowledge base. It's an example of some flows that our uh, product will quite happily break down for you. And you can see there, there's some very easy pairs to spot there. And as humans, we can easily say, okay, well, yeah, there's, there's a, a debit and a cre credit there, equal amounts, that's easy to pair, they're next to each other. Um, and then there's another one where there's one account splitting into two accounts. Um, uh, that's a slightly more complex flow. It's a one to N flow. And that would represent that's two separate flows there. So there are actually three flows in this transaction if it was a transaction. Um, and this is actually all in our knowledge base where we're explaining how monetary flows works. Now, pair matching and one to N matching, that doesn't sound very complicated. I know on the surface, right? But if you just go down a little bit deeper, it's actually very complicated as a problem. Um, um, it, it involves a mathematical field called combinatorics. Um, and um, the you know being able to take a number of different inputs, like different possible values, and figure out how they aggregate into another value. Um, as the number of values increases that you're analyzing, uh, this problem becomes exponentially more difficult to solve in terms of the time it takes to solve. Um, and there are no shortcuts in finding the answers to these. And there are many possibilities. And uh, uh, this is an attribute of a computer science problem that is known as an NP hard problem. Hard, it's basically computer science lingo for saying this is not an easy problem to solve. And you might be there for some time trying to solve it. So at MindBridge, we've been solving this problem for, for a number of years. And we've added more capabilities uh, in, in the last year, again, uh, to improve our flow and pair matching, uh, one to end matching, and the combinatoric approaches that we're using. Um, and this is to support really complex flows. There's an example of a fairly complex flow. It's not actually that complex. Um, on the bottom left here, uh, a visualization of that kind of flow across the different levels of the accounting structure. Um, but balancing different approaches to solving this, because this is a hard problem, using different types of programming approaches uh, uh, to solve it is also something that we're doing. And combining those approaches to end up with something that is workable, that will complete in your lifetime, hopefully, right? Um, and, uh, and can be used effectively to break down transactions. So again, this is something that um, many people overlook uh, in mind, which when they look at it, they don't see some of the nuances and complexity into how our platform works. But just 
breaking down financial flows in a complex system is actually quite a hard problem. Uh, just an aside, um, I know a lot of people talk about co quantum computing and you know, why do we need it? And everyone worries about the cryptography uh, uh, being broken by quantum computing. This problem is one of those problems that can be solved by quantum computing very effectively. So we're all waiting for that. But in the meantime, MindBridge is solving this using you know, smart, smart approaches where we're combining different methods, heuristics, and so forth to effectively break, break down transactions of increasing complexity and do it in a reasonable time frame. So again, just a very small detail about how our platform works. But it, it belays a complexity that is actually quite hard to solve. And this is one of the reasons why you know, it takes time, it takes years to solve these kind of problems well. Um, in, in our last uh, EDGE session that we did last year, uh, um, I talked about another uh, problem that we had been solving, and I, and I maybe spent too long on this problem, uh, so I apologize. Um, I talked about how hard it was to scale unsupervised machine learning algorithms, uh, which do outlier detection. So uh, uh, an attribute of these types of algorithms is that they compare, it's like comparing every line or every entry or every flow in a, in a transaction to every other flow in the ledger. And what you're doing in these cases is you're trying to figure out how like or unlike it is to the other, other transactions. Um, and using this, you, you figure out what's normal, what's actually going on, and you can figure out what doesn't look normal. And outlier detection tends to have that, that common pattern. Learn what's normal, then figure out what's not normal. Um, so they're hard to scale. We, we demonstrated this. I showed you an example of a, an off-the-shelf algorithm, which you can download. It's part of, it's a, it's a common algorithm called SOS which is a part of many uh, libraries that you, you, you can find on the internet, Python and, or, or, or Java, and you can run that algorithm and it will do outlier detection. Um, but the news is those off the shelf algorithms struggle, right? They actually really struggle as the amount of data increases. Uh, so much so that to actually process a million transactions with that algorithm is a big problem, right? Uh, with the off the shelf algorithm is a big problem. And uh, MyBridge has spent several years um, um, figuring out how to optimize these um, very expensive algorithms is called an N squared cost algorithm, which means that as the amount of data going in uh, increases, the time to actually run the algorithm increases with a squared power, right? So you can imagine that it's it's gonna it's gonna do this hockey stick maneuver where uh, as as data increases, it's going to become uh, increasing. It's gonna take an increasing amount of time to solve to the point where it becomes intractable. Um, so we did a comparison in that presentation of. MindBridge's algorithms versus the uh, algorithm that you can download from the public internet, which implements it according to the designer of the algorithm. It's in uh, a library called uh, Scikit-Learn, um, or Scikit-SOS is the actual algorithm that you can get to. And we compared our runtime versus uh, the, the off-the-shelf algorithm runtime. And what was apparent is what would take years in that algorithm takes just hours in MindBridge. And we've gone from processing millions of transactions in an audit thinking, hey, yeah, that's pretty normal. Actually, it's a problem if you run this off the shelf algorithm. Um, uh, but we're able to run millions. We don't even think about that anymore. We used to think about 10 million uh, row ledgers. We don't think about that anymore. Those just pass through our platform with no issue. Um, we're into the hundreds of millions, getting close to billions. Uh, and uh, as Danielle mentioned, you know, 500 million, half a billion entries in a single analysis is now something that MindBridge is uh, getting quite comfortable with. Um, so over time, we've been scaling our platform, scaling these types of hard to solve algorithms, um, um, you know, and, you know, delivering this to our users to the point where in, in, the, in the busy season, we're processing thousands of audits with hundreds of millions, billions of entries. Um, so, you know, it, this is a part of enabling what we need to do at MindBridge to serve our customers. And it's also part of enabling our future. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Flex now and the story of Flex, because Flex starts a long time ago. Uh, and I know a lot of people have been talking about it recently. We actually uh, started shipping it a couple of years ago uh, to early adopters. This year, it's really been a, a, a fundamental part of our delivery and roadmap with multiple different analysis being delivered. But it started a long time ago. Um, um, this chart that's on the um, bottom left here is actually from 2017, believe it or not. What we discovered is that using outlier detection methods, uh, we can use almost the same set of outlier detection methods, the, these MindBridge algorithms, and we can point them at different kinds of data, different scenarios. Uh, 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 notably, uh, uh, some scenarios where we had high frequency trading data, 
versus um, let me think of the other one uh, uh, tax filings. So they're very different, uh, you know, quarterly tax filings. Uh, and we wanted to see how many of the algorithms would work well and if they would find things that users cared about. Um, so dating back to 2017, this was when we were doing things like working with the, the Bank of England in the UK. Uh, what we found is that 90 percent of the algorithms, because our algorithms were, were designed to meet different requirements and designed to work in different scenarios, uh, um, 90% of our algorithms worked out of the box. And the time to develop the second ensemble from the first was half, as you'd imagine. Um, and then we, we then did it again, and we then did it again. And we discovered that we were continually to, we were continuing to be able to more rapidly deliver uh, new ensembles of outlier detection elements on new domains. Um, and we figured there was something in this. And this is actually where the idea of Flex was born. We actually used to call it Gadget. Uh, the GAD in Gadget was known for ge known as general anomaly detection with get on the end. Um, and we looked at, okay, where are the areas in, you know, in finance that we think this might work? We looked at a couple of different scenarios, things like bank statements, charge cards, payroll, purchase to pay, order to cash. And we did a whole bunch of experiments. And we found that this worked very well. And what you're finding today is Flex is now something uh, that is delivering multiple different analysis types in our products and uh, delivering uh, uh, delivering value to our clients in a different way, right? So this is one of our uh, slides from our pitch deck. Like most people start with general ledger analysis. That's the analysis that we've been doing for a really long time now. Uh, it works really well. And we kind of say, hey, you should start there because it's, it's a holistic view of an organization's activities. Everybody has a general ledger. So we know it's going to work uh, for you. Um, and, but we've, we've started to expand out. We're expanding the data aperture into these other different uh, uh, sub-ledgers and different types of business. And notice there's flex there on the bottom, right? So being able to uh, flex the analysis capabilities of MindBridge for uh, a new scenario. So what's interesting is as we've been delivering flex, particularly this year, we, we delivered uh, a number of different analyses in this, in this visualization. What's happened is we've discovered that actually you don't have to start with the general ledger at all. Whereas we thought that was a good place to be, you don't need to do that. You can actually start with something like payroll. We've had customers who've started there. Uh, and what's interesting is because of the focus in on a particular business function or a particular area of the business, it's actually sometimes faster to deploy and faster to receive value from these, these, these modules. So we're saying to our users, hey, you don't have to just focus on general ledger. Well, as we think it's great, and we do, we, we you know, when I would probably start there if it was me. You can start where you like now. You can start with different analysis types and receive value very quickly from our platform. So that's the kind of great news um, uh, on, on what we've been delivering uh, in Flex today. But this is part of a bigger strategy, right? Um, and this is a strategy which we've maybe not shared in too much detail uh, before. Um, but I wanted to show you a slide deck that we presented to our board in 2019, which was a part of our uh, long-term vision of where our product, where our company was going. Um, and we saw this as being, you know, as we, as a lot of people perceive what MindBridge is doing as revolutionary, we, we perceive this as an evolutionary strategy, right? Uh, the most advanced yet acceptable capabilities being deployed in, incrementally. So um, how did we get to Flex, right? Well, we saw that single ledgers were really valuable. The, the general ledger capability was important. We also saw that there were many more types of data that were a part of the finance function that were relevant and needed to be brought into this kind of analysis. So we figured that we should, we should leverage um, our ability to construct ensembles to create configurable analysis. That's flex, by the way. Um, uh, and again, this was back in 2019 that we set this path. Uh, moving on from that is we can deliver valuable in multiple segments of the business, very focused, uh, um, targeted risk ensembles for different areas. So things like payroll or vendor, general ledger, accounts receivable, accounts payable, so forth. So multiple ledgers being analyzed. But where we were really going, where we thought the, 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 the huge value was, is at the end of this journey, this connected view of finance, right? Um, so 2019, so uh, in 20, this week, we presented this in November 2019 to our board. Um, and next year in 2024, we'll, we'll be five years into a five-year mission to deliver this. So, um, you know, we're very excited about where this is going. Um, and to talk to you about the connective view of finance, which is something that is imminent. It's not, this isn't a dream that we've had. Uh, we are executing on this and we will be delivering on this imminently. Um, so again, a five-year mission. So I'm, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, 
uh, Rachel Kirk. And I was about to call you Captain Kirk there for, for a five-year mission. <laughs> uh, I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Rachel Kirkham, uh, who's going to talk to you about where we're going and the uh, future of, uh, of Mindbridge. Yeah, great. Thanks, Robin. So um, I'm going to talk to you guys today about the product roadmap. So just a disclaimer, um, the future roadmap is illustrative and obviously things might change, but you go to the next slide, Robin. The, the first thing I really wanted to do was to talk about integrated risk views. So Robin's just done a great job of telling you the story of how we're aiming to get to a connected view of finance. And next year, one of the things we're going to be looking at is how do we bring together all the information you're generating into Mindbridge into a single place so you can get to your insights quickly? So when I think about integrated risk views, I think about Mindbridge giving you better con control, clarity and confidence over financial reporting. So whether it's being able to get a bird's eye view of your financial processes and identify where in the business you might need to go and do a bit of investigation, um, get a better understanding of the activity across your subsidiaries, or indeed get a better picture of the risk across your audit engagements so that you can focus on whether you've got the right resources in the right place. Integrated risk views give you the ability to bring together all of that information that's being generated in Mindbridge so you know where to go next. So if we go to the next slide, Robin. So to support this, there were a couple of key themes for us in our roadmap where we're um, seeking to kind of optimize the experience that you have as customers. So the first one is around seamless data integration. So irrespective of the data you're trying to bring to Mindbridge, it should be as easy to get this data into the product and get your analysis running as possible. So you'll see here, obviously we're on a journey with our general ledger analysis, but as Robin has mentioned, there is a broader range of data you can now bring to Mindbridge in order to start generating insights using our anomaly detection. So for us, it's really important that you have efficient analysis steps so that you can just get into those insights as soon as possible. So if we go to the, the next slide, Robin. So here, what's coming up in seamless data integration? So there are a couple of things coming in um, the next release that I wanted to highlight. We've actually just um, uh, released an update to our API, which has got improved coverage of some of the key functionality in Mindbridge. This actually sits alongside our more continuous ingestion workflow. So one of the things that we're seeing is that um, our customers want to run the analytics at the frequency that's aligned to their internal control environment. So we're really looking at how do we best support that workflow so that you can execute a Mindbridge analysis and, and do take some action, maybe on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a quarterly basis, and so on. This also may be helpful for some of our customers that are doing public audits. So if you're in a quarterly cycle, this is something that you might want to, to look into in order to support that, that audit work. Um, these two things combined are really going to um, enable our, our, our customers to connect to Mindbridge, push data into the platform, and then also extract it if they want to do further analysis. Um, when we look to, to next year, um, there are some key things that we're going to be working on. Um, the first one I wanted to call out was an update to the Mindbridge account classification system. One of the things that we see is that our customers want to be able to map their accounts as quickly and efficiently as possible. And so to do that, we're going to be aligning our, our classification system to IFRS and US GAAP. Um, this is super important, I think, um, because, you know, uh, I'm very aware that we're missing some of the, the key, key codes that are relevant for, for accounting treatments. Um, this will also involve an update to expert score and um, allow our customers to kind of get to their mapping much quicker. Um, the second thing that we're going to be working on is increasing account grouping flexibility. So account grouping is um, a really important aspect of kind of grouping those accounts so that you can get to an accurate representation of the financial statements. Um, we want to make this as easy to do as possible. So this, this area of our product is going to have a bit of a revamp. Um, we're intending to allow flexibility right down to the engagement level. So this will allow you to be able to use libraries to really centralize your methodology approach while also um, uh, giving, giving the flexibility to get to accurate financial statements at the engagement level. Um, alongside this, there will be uh, some just general uh, workflow improvements in our ingestion process. Um, so I'm really excited about this. Um, I think it's you know, gonna be um, super helpful for all of our customers. Um, and then looking further into the future, 
one of the things that we often hear from customers is I'd like to be able to do kind of repeatable transformations of my data in MindBridge. So this is something that, again, I think would add a lot of value, particularly if you're kind of doing the same process every month. You don't want to have to manipulate that data out of product. You want to do it inside the product. So um, that's something that's going to be coming up in the future. Um, if we go to the next slide, Robin. So the, the second key stream that I want to talk to you about is consistent, efficient risk invest investigation workflows. So if I look at our um, enterprise customers, they're really looking to execute a particular internal control inside of MindBridge. Um, if I look at our audit customers, they're really trying to execute a, a particular audit procedure. So whether it's um, testing your operating expenses or potentially uh, identify manual journals that you want to test. Really what you're trying to do is get a, a good overview of where the risk lies, drill into the details so that you can get to like kind of a better understanding of what might be causing the risk and then get into the details so that you can see which control points are triggered, uh, get an understanding of kind of how risky is something. Uh, so give you the information that you need in order to go and ask intelligent questions when you're investigating it. So thinking through this workflow, one of the key things we want to do is ensure that you can have a, a clear path through the product so that you can get to the detail you need in order to go and execute any kind of investigation successfully. So um, we're making great progress on this. Um, we've seen a lot of uptake in our risk segmentation dashboard um, and population tagging, which is a new feature that came um, in May. So those two features combined are actually allowing our customers to really get to much more granular analysis around different populations of transactions, um, which allows them to kind of, you know, identify populations that are subject to a particular internal control, identify populations that are being tested differently, perhaps because of the accounting treatment that's relevant for them, um, and a whole range of other, other uses besides. So we're really excited to see people using these, um, and there will be enhancements to both areas of the product um, to continue to advance kind of um, that part of the product. So go to the next slide, really. So, um, so population typing, a feature that I think you're going to hear about a bit more in some of the other sessions, um, is it, really useful because um, it allows me to say this segment of, of my general ledger, uh, I want to be able to kind of filter on that. I want to be able to report on it in a particular way. Um, and upcoming in, in our next release is something we're going to, is called risk monitoring. So the risk monitoring um, dashboard is designed to allow you as a, as a user to kind of investigate different populations of data. Um, it will tell you uh, where who has um, got the most risk assigned to them since the last time you uploaded data into the product. But it also allows you to track particular populations of um, uh, transactions in the product and see how risk is changing over time. So this is something that's going to be really helpful both for uh, our audit customers and actually for our enterprise customers as well. Um, when we think about our audit customers, this allows you to identify significant risks potentially um, uh, related to particular business processes, you know, identify those in MindBridge and track those, um, particularly between interim and final audit, but potentially if you're doing a quarterly audit, it would also be relevant there. In our, in our enterprise um, customers, I think, you know, for internal audit, it might be that you've got a particular finding which was a, assigned to a particular process and you want to be able to track that through the products and see if, the, you know, the risk is decreasing over time or if it's staying particularly stable. Um, uh, and there's some other uses to that, but we're really excited to, to bring this to you. And that's coming out in the November release. Looking forward to next year. There's a couple of things for us. Um, so population tagging has proven to be quite popular. So we're intending to bring that to all of our analysis modules. This will give everyone a, a familiar workflow in order to ma manage particular populations of transactions in, in any of the analyses. Um, we're also looking at kind of integrated risk views. So I talked a little bit about this earlier, but this is something that we're, we're also very interested in kind of bringing to market and um, you guys kind of getting that bird's eye view of risk across uh, the, the entities that you're looking at. In the future, there are also some key capabilities around being able to configure particular procedure workflows. So being able to say, I need to see this um, particular analytic, then this analytic to get to uh, this particular um, view of the transaction so that I can conduct, conduct a particular test. This will really allow audit firms to specify audit methodology in a very clear way in the product so that their users know exactly what they need to do next. 
um, for internal audit and for finance, uh, this will allow you to kind of say, this is what my um, flow through my bridge should be in order to execute a particular internal control. Um, there's also some work we want to do around reconciliation. So one of the cool things about MindBridge is now we're able to bring in much more data into the product um, in order to both support financial reporting and also to support the audit workflow. It would be really valuable to be able to reconcile data between uh, the general ledger and your sub ledgers. So this is again something that we're looking at in the future. Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that as well. Reconciliations can be quite boring as an auditor, so being able to automate them is uh, definitely something that would excite me. Um, so um, yeah, awesome. If we go on to the next slide, Robin. Um, so finally, and maybe it's because I'm VP of AI, obviously the analytics are near and dear to my heart, but uh, insightful and relevant analytics is the third stream of work. So for us, it's really important that we don't just rest on our laurels and we really focus on being able to identify all key risks across finance. Um, this is, is particularly relevant for all of our sub ledger um, analysis types, but equally, I think within the general ledger, there's more risks we can look to detect there. Um, so we're constantly researching methods that can provide the most value to, to, to our users in order to identify unusual patterns of behavior. So uh, this um, screenshot is actually from our product. It's uh, looking at vendor analytics. So um, this is an example of some of those new control points that Robin was talking about. Um, uh, it's based on our, our, the flex part of our platform and we're continuing to add algorithms such that we can create new control points and better find the risks that you care about. So if we go to the next slide, Robin. So what's coming up in our analytics stream? So the first one I want to talk about uh, is process risk analytics. So we've got a new, new, new type of analytic that we're, we're delivering in, into the product this year. This is really focused around um, being able to detect risks within financial processes. When we look at financial processes, uh, one of the key things I often find is that A, the data that represents these processes can be pretty varied and it can cover multiple different kinds of documents. Um, it can be split across systems. So we often find businesses have got multiple systems that are operating a particular financial process and actually being able to um, understand uh, whether the data matches across those systems can be really important. So um, being able to bring in data from across financial systems, link all that data together, and then be able to run anomaly detection analytics on top it is, is really important in order to get a, a good view of risk across those processes. So we've designed a set of um, algorithms which is the, uh, will look for different kinds of risk indicators associated with the operation of financial processes. Um, what's really cool about this is because it's um, built on Flex, um, we've obviously focused on uh, two key business processes, which is purchase to pay and order to cash. But because of the way that our, our platform is designed, we can actually apply these to any number of financial processes. So this is something obviously we'll be looking at, at, at working on in the future, but um, it's just worth um, highlighting that because although we started with purchase to pay and order to cash, it, by certainly not the last analysis module we're going to build um, using the, the, these capabilities. Um, I'm, I'm going to cover what those control points look like next, so I'm going to leave that uh, for now. But when we look, look forward to the next year, um, there's a couple of key things that, that are important to us. So um, we've heard feedback from some of our existing customers that being able to um, incorporate their own business logic into our ensemble would be really valuable to refine their, their results to, to really pinpoint the things that matter to them. So we will be bringing configurable rule-based control points into the product such that we can start to incorporate your business logic into our analysis um, and really refine those results so that, so that you can find the things that matter. Um, additionally, we're going to add some um, new control points into the general ledger. Um, this is particularly um, useful for, I think, some of our enterprise customers that are focused on different kinds of business risk to our audit customers. But equally, I think there will be some valuable um, control points there that will, will add value to our audit customers. So um, one of the nice things about, about the general ledger is we can actually create custom risk scores now. So because of this, um, you'll be able to incorporate the new control points both into the MindBridge score, but also into your own risk scores. Um, which will expand the number of audit procedures we potentially execute in MindBridge. So uh, exciting times ahead in the GL. Um, next, we're going to focus on scaling. So um, it's really important that you get faster results, particularly 
if you're trying to use MindBridge more frequently to operate an internal control. Um, we've done a lot of scaling work, as Robin has mentioned, like we've really got to 500 million um, observations, um, but we want to push that further. Um, we also want to make sure that um, the flex part of our product scales effectively, um, given the kind of volume of data that we're seeing from some of our customers. So um, it's just for us, I think, really important that we accelerate the time, uh, well, reduce the time it takes for you to get value from the product. So um, this will be a continuing work stream for us. Um, when we look forward into um, the future, there are another couple of key things that um, I'm excited about. So in the background, we've been working on something called Analysis Designer. Um, analysis Designer is a, a tool to configure um, the product such that you can use our algorithms to create a new um, analysis type. So Robin's talked a bit about this already, but we are actually working on a, on a, on a way for you to do this yourselves. Um, uh, that's something that's, I think, really exciting for some of our customers. I know people uh, have already talked to us about it already. Um, but uh, yeah, that, that, that's something that's on our roadmap. Um, we also want to make our analysis module smarter. So um, one of the things that you'll find if you, you work with us on, on our analysis modules today is that we might do a bit of tuning with you to get the best out of the results. We're actually going to look to automate that um, fairly significantly so that you can take a module out of the box, press a button um, and refine your results in, 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 a, in an easy way. So that's uh, that's an exciting capability. The last one is um, really expanding the use of um, forecasting in the product. So we've had feedback from our customers that they're really interested in using things like um, the forecasting on ratios, but with less data. Um, so we're looking at um, the best option um, to support that, but um, and also potentially bringing it into trending so that um, people can uh, look at kind of forecasts for individual account balances as well as the ratios. So this should really support the execution of potentially substantive analytical procedures in MindBridge for, for auditors, but also for, for our enterprise customers, it will give you a way to take the data you've already got in MindBridge and maybe get a, a good picture about whether your, your business's health is where you think it is, or there are there differences between your kind of other forecasting and budgets and, and what you're getting from MindBridge. So, um, okay, great. If you go to the next slide, Robin. Um, so I just wanted to talk a bit more about the risks that we're looking to detect in purchase pay and order to cash. So um, in, in terms of, I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone <laughs> who's watching me is, a, is aware of these business processes. Um, we, we had um, uh, prospects and customers approach us time and time again to see, uh, hey, can you look at business processes? These are the kinds of risks we're looking to detect. So we've been beavering away and uh, we've come up with some algorithms designed to detect key risks in financial, financial processes. So these, uh, if we think about a business process and we think about a, a purchase order or sales order, that's the initiation point for a transaction that will span, you know, maybe a whole fiscal period, maybe multiple fiscal periods. Um, and there will be different stages of that process um, where there are different documents created related to that transaction. So we would describe that as a process instance. So um, uh, if you say take a purchase order as a starting point, that's the start of an instance, and therefore there will be other documents associated with, with that process. So once we have that information, we can look for a couple of different things. So we can look to see whether the process is um, out of order. So do the documents appear in a sequential order or are things mixed up in places? That can indicate um, a particular kind of risk. It might mean your internal control environment isn't being operated effectively. Could be your system's not being configured correctly, but something you might want to go and investigate earlier, uh, further. We can also look for things like significant time lags between documents. Um, and, and this is um, obviously an anomaly detection approach. So we actually compare what the time lags are across your business process and look for significant differences there. So you might have, I don't know, maybe you haven't gone and collected payment for an uh, invoice that you've issued and it's been outstanding for 180 days, you probably want to go and follow that up and say, hey, why hasn't this been collected? Can I find out what's going on here? Um, this allows you to kind of um, optimize your business process such that you kind of, you're operating at the speeds at which you, you want to and therefore, you know, managing your cash effectively. Um, we can also look for incomplete processes. So where has the process not been followed? Where are the documents missing? Um, and is this tied to a particular customer or vendor? Uh, you know, that could indicate a potentially unusual relationship with that vendor, vendor or customer and something you might want to go and follow up on. 
we can also look for complexity. So your business process will probably look pretty similar across the process, but there may be instances where something's gone wrong or maybe there's something unusual happened in the contracting stage. We can actually identify those by looking at the structure of your process um, and, and highlight the things that look different. Um, we can also um, use more advanced knowledge detection to just consider all the data points we've collected and identify based on all those data points, where is there something unusual? Um, uh, we can look for flurries of user activity. Um, we can look for missing payments, uh, unusual values um, based on kind of the shape of your business, normal business activity. And of course, tie that all back to, to vendors and customers so that you can get a list of these are the riskiest vendors based on all the interactions this vendor has had across your business process. Uh, same applies to customers. Um, and obviously this is all based on our a standard approach to Ensemble AI. So bringing all of these different risk indicators together can give you a really powerful indicator of the health of your financial process. So we're super excited about this. Um, uh, one of the things I want to highlight, and I'm gonna hand back over to Robin, is this is a little bit different to process mining. Um, Robin's gonna cover kind of some of the key differences, but um, this is really pure play on anomaly detection, um, just that scale across the financial process. Um, and that's why um, it is so exciting to us. So without further ado, I'll hand it back to Robin. Thanks very much, Rachel. Um, so yeah, um, kind of really exciting times as, as we reach this kind of point in our journey where not only are we finding anomalies in ledgers, we're starting to connect the, the connect across the organization. Our, our CFO talks about a financial risk cockpit powered by anomaly detection. It's one of my favorite kind of words to describe where we're going. Um, but you know, as Rachel described, you know, um, uh, what we're what we're planning to do is creating a connected view of finance. I wanted to just go back to this original uh, kind of statement I made about why is MindBridge different, right? Uh, and it's because we're leveraging you know unsupervised machine learning algorithms that do things like compare every transaction or activity or process that it finds to every other, right? And then look for what are normal normal patterns. It doesn't have to be told what the normal patterns are. This is one of the important things. Oh, it's unsupervised, right? Uh, it doesn't have to be told what they are. It will discover them itself, right? And then once it's discovered them itself, it can actually look at the things that don't look right. It can look at things that don't, they don't fit the others. They may be slightly different. Could be an error or a mistake. Could actually be someone trying to deceive you. Something like that, right? So this point about top down versus bottom up, which we started with in the presentation, like why MindBridge? Why did we make the MindBridge platform? We're applying the same approach. So of ensemble AI, multiple connected uh, unsupervised machine learning algorithms, looking at all of the data points, comparing all points to all others in order to surface uh, uh, we, we talk about as being unknowns, right? Genuine unknown discoveries in the data set. Something that you won't find through a top-down approach, right? If you bring a bias of what you expect in data, you are gonna slice and dice data in a particular way. You're gonna look at the data in a particular way and you may miss things that are important because we all bring a bias to, an, uh, to our own hypothesis and human hypothesis generation. Um, we look for things that we expect or we anticipate, right? And this is where you know, our bottom-up approach of let the data speak for itself, find the things that don't look right, and then surface them to the user. This is what's so powerful about it. And we're now applying this to uh, areas of the business, order to cash, procure to pay, process analytics. So we're calling this process risk analytics. It's not the same as process mining. I wanna be very clear on that. Um, we are applying anomaly detection across all of these different activities. We're discovering what's actually going on without the need to spend extensive time kind of configuring what, what do I expect the process to be, right? Um, um, so this is why it's, it's, it's less biased, it's reduced bias. Um, this is why it's also flexible and efficient. So as your business evolves, it's also going to adapt to new things it finds. Hey, you have a new line of business, let's say, and it has a new set of things it's doing. And some of these are a little unusual, right? Here they are, right? This, this value that I talked about from the, the top down versus bottom up, which mind bridges this bottom up approach, it's different. It's super valuable. It's, uh, in, in my opinion, it's, it's higher value than these descriptive analytics, which look from the top down, because it really finds what's there, right? Uh, it leaves no stone unturned. So I'm super excited about us reaching this point in our journey, where we're starting to get this connected view of finance. And, um, you know, the news is we, we also would like to recruit 
anybody who's interested in being an early adopter for this te technology um, uh, uh, to join our early adopter program. You can reach out to your um, uh, CSM customer support manager to get started. If you're interested in process risk analytics, this is stuff that's imminent, right? Uh, and we are working with organizations already to do this. So please reach out if you want to be an early adopter of this, you want to find out what's coming. This is a great way of doing that. Uh, um, so um, um, yeah, please come and join, come and join us and uh, we'll, we'll show you what we're working on. Um, we'll allow you to influence it as well and take your feedback. It's so, so important for us in building a product, uh, uh, talking, to, talking to our stakeholders, understanding what they care about, making sure we're delivering something that has the highest value to them. Um, so uh, we're also in the process of um, uh, putting together a customer advisory board. So again, if you're interested in being a part of that, please reach out to your CSM. Uh, exciting times ahead, probably one of the most exciting years ahead in MindBridge's history. You know, we're getting to this point where we're connecting uh, uh, finance. So we're very excited for this and we're very excited to see where we can, we can take this. Um, uh, I just wanted to uh, a quick call out for, there's a session uh, that starts in uh, at 15 minutes. Uh, which is uh, going beyond SOC 2 certification, auditing AI systems. This is one of our very special speakers, Adriana, who's the CEO of Holistic AI, extremely expert. And, you know, I'm going to be sitting watching this session as well. I want to you know, encourage you to join. But we have, uh, uh, as Danielle has highlighted already, uh, we have a program today and tomorrow, which is really awesome. There are some great keynotes today uh, uh, from KPMG and Chevron, uh, but make sure you come back uh, tomorrow because, again, it just keeps going. There's some amazing sessions. Please, uh, please continue to engage. Ask us all the questions uh, you like. Uh, uh, we're, we're we're here to listen. So uh, with that, um, I see we're at time. Um, um, do we have a little bit of? Can we answer a few questions? You think? Um, one, one or two minutes. Okay, so um, yeah. there's a couple of questions that came up in the chat. Um, so um, one of the questions was, um, the, the, the question is, I, I didn't understand why the other tools that have the, algorith that have the algorithms don't scale, right? So why is this different? So MindBridge's approach to anomaly detection is to use this, this, this technique called unsupervised machine learning. And I mentioned it's this process of compare every transaction to every other transaction. So that's inherently a very expensive way of an algorithm working. Um, and it's, uh, uh, this is a, it's a kind of known problem in computer science that when you do these types of compare everything to everything else, as the data set size increases, it becomes increasingly an intractable problem. So uh, when you look at algorithms that do this, you have to figure out how to make them scale. And uh, this means you're using approaches like, well, how do I how do I create the same result, but by not comparing everything to everything else? Is there is there any way I can make this work, uh, 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 continue to be accurate as an outlier detection algorithm, but not do the same amount of work? So at MindBridge, we've been looking at those approaches. The reason that the off-the-shelf algorithms don't do this is in, in part because they uh, people have not uh, they have not been able to apply them at scale, right? We needed to apply them at scale, and that's one of the reasons why we've optimized them. We spent years optimizing these algorithms so that they can work in scale. Uh, we do have feedback from uh, um, other uh, other products or other uh, even open source that's out there uh, that indicates that uh, scaling these algorithms is a challenge for everyone, and, and MindBridge does appear to be doing it better than most, uh, better than everyone else that we know. I would encourage if you have more uh, questions about this problem, there is a, an entire session from last year's Edge where I probably go into explaining it in too much detail. But if you're interested in learning more, uh, there is there's an entire Edge session which you can uh, which you can rerun from last year where we talk about the challenges. We go into a specific algorithm, uh, we compare it uh, and why it's expensive, how it works, and then um, we don't tell you exactly how we've optimized it because we consider that uh, some of our um, uh, some of our IP. Uh, 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 some of our know-how, uh, but we give you uh, uh, some flavors of how you do this, how you scale this. And it's not as simple as, well, the cloud has enough compute power. We'll just throw it in the cloud and, and point lots of um, uh, point, point lots of, of CPUs at this problem and it'll go away. These types of problems uh, you can't solve easily just by throwing lots of cloud compute uh, at it. Uh, it ends up being very costly to solve. Um, um, so um, I think... We're at about five minutes past. Uh, let me see if there's another question that we can quickly uh, take. I see that uh, Rachel has dropped. She's she's gone to uh, start the next session. Um, uh, so um, 
Another question we have, there's a wide range of products that MindBridge is offering anomaly detection across different areas of finance. Can I start with one module? Do I need to access them all at once? You can absolutely start with one module. You don't have to access them all at once. Uh, um, I, you know, I think usually we would encourage someone to start with one, right? Uh, kind of crawl, walk, run approach to adoption. Start with one, the thing that you care about most, maybe, right? Uh, use that, um, see how it works for you, and then progress from there. So you can absolutely start with one. You don't have to consume it all in one shot. Uh, okay, so with that, we're five minutes past. I want to thank you all for attending. Uh, please uh, stick around and uh, attend the next next session from Adriano. Um, and uh, with that, I want to thank you all uh, for spending the time. And um, I hope you enjoy uh, your uh, Edge conference. Thanks very much. If you want to get into touch with myself or Rachel, uh, please feel free to contact us at these email addresses here. Thank you.